Join Teddy Herons is our new topic we are going to cover in this lesson, but please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now, to cover joints, of course, you need to know the idea of moments and then the idea of equilibrium. Basically, that's the only thing we need. So, this one comes immediately after covering equilibrium of rigid bodies. So, joint nodes are also examples of rigid bodies. So, Basically, but the question is, what do we mean by joint rods? Now, you see, this was one rod and this was another rod. So, when I join these two and I join them, you see here, I would have used the uh, a pin so that I form this and this. Now, if you see that this one after forming this body, and you see that external forces are not going to change this body, it means we have formed a joint rigid body. Oh. Jointed rods. They are jointed in that you combine this and this to form one thing as you see. So these ones are called jointed rods, as simple as that. So for it to be a jointed rod, it means that it is a joint combining one or two, I mean combining two or more rods. So we can have another joint here combining something here, we can have as long as they are having a joint. And then an external force, you see this one is a bit strong. So that was what we call jointed rods. So for jointed rods, we consider the equilibrium of system before separation and after separation. So here the idea is going to be to get the solutions for these problems, we consider equilibrium before separation and equilibrium after separation. What do you mean by equilibrium before separation? So let us consider this equilibrium before separation. Consider two uniform rods, of course now we know what a uniform rod is. A uniform rod is a rod when weight is acting in the middle of that rod. FB and DC of weights, W1, W2 respectively, resting on a rough horizontal surface and jointed at B. So it's like jointed at B, meaning they join this BC as they are saying and FB and then they are jointed at B. So this was the case. We are jointed at B there. Now, this is now the first diagram of course. So they are resting on a rough horizontal surface. If it's a rough horizontal surface, first of all, there is contact, we have reaction. There is contact, we have reaction. The surface is rough, we expect their friction. And this one is also rough, so we expect their friction. Weight is acting in the middle. Some people put them up to the side, no problem. But me, I want it at that level so that uh, I don't get any those frictional forces. So you can put there and there and see past that. Now by taking one out to get this reaction, the cases are going to be always we get in most cases we get reaction, these reactions before separation. How? We take when you get moments here, you are going to get this reaction at C. If you take moments at C, then you get moments at A. Or some people when they get moments, they sometimes they get confused. So if you, if you take moments at A, you get the reaction at C. If you take moments at C, you get the reaction at A. As simple as that. But if you are not sure about that, after getting one moment, after taking moment at C and then getting A, then you can get this other C by considering, by resolving vertically, by resolving vertically these forces, then you will be getting another reaction. But you can get all of them by simply taking moments. If you want the moments at A, if you want my immediate reaction at A, Get, take moments at C. If you want the action at C, take moments at the opposite side, uh, side as simple as that. Okay, now this one, in this case, when we want the reactions, we take moments before separation. Why? Another thing I want to tell you is these forces are always going to be, if we have a line separating these two, these forces always are going to divide this way into two parts as it's been there. Now equilibrium after separation. So after doing this here we are getting the reaction and then the I mean the reaction. So after separating this is what happens. So where do we get this and where do we get these ones? Now we take this lesson here, this this note here before we come to this. After separation reaction at the points are the are equal but opposite in direction. Why? Because when I have a joint like this, here there is no any net force, there's no force acting at this joint, so it's just in equilibrium. It means that the reactions are after separating, it means that these reactions are 
equal but opposite in direction. This one is going downwards, this one is going upwards. And so in result of this, we get the x component, the y component, the y component, x component. See the opposite. This one is going up, the y component is going down. The x component is going this side, the other one is going this side. So they are equal but opposite in direction. So that's the case we have here. So this is our first case here. You see when we resolve that. And this is our second case when we have the reaction going the other side. So this is in simple terms. And enjoy it here. The reactions are like that. R, R. So they are equal but opposite in the reaction. And this is going to be if this is our joint. That is the idea that we generate this one. So when you generate this one, we'll be adding that. This is going to be our y. This will be our x. Then this one will give us our y. This will give us our x. So that there is no net force at the joint. That's what we are talking about. So when you separate the thing, so when I put this one, when I separate this, so this is our joint. I get this, I get this. Now these are the, these are the forces here. A, F, A, C, F, C, R, F, C. Just the only thing that we bring in after separating is these are the components, the vertical components of the reaction at the joint. As simple as that. Once you know that, the rest are going to be very easy. The other thing we solve the problem are obtained by considering the premium of one of the roads. Now, the question is to get other reactions because they are going, some are going to be hinged. Then how do we get them in simple terms? What's the premium of A that is A that is? But as we've seen in the premium of the bodies, it's always better to consider one which is having less forces or which is less congested, as simple as that, or less clouded. So you will see on those two diagrams which one is having lesser forces. That's what you consider so that you, your calculations are very, very easy. So what he's talking about. So, the steps to solve problems, they are very easy. Draw neat and correct diagrams. Forces should be shown and marked clearly. Take moments to obtain the actions. To obtain the actions at the joint. Forces at the joint should be divided into two diagrams, as you see. That's what they call the separation. If there is an axis of symmetry, it should be stated and the results can be used. When the system is symmetric about an axis, then identical sets of forces will act on both sides. What do we mean? If a system, say this one, is uh, if the system says it's symmetric about, say, the vertical axis here. Now, when you separate these forces, it means that these two now are going to be active on one side, as you see. These X's from them remain, but this vertical, because it's acting about the vertical axis, they are going to be in one direction as you see there. So those are the cases we are going to use, and that's the best of this lesson. We are going to see examples now in this lesson. See you there. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel.